Welcome to St. Rose of Lima Parish. Today's Mass is the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Mass intentions are for Margareta Muff and Harley Watkins. Our opening song is number 566, the Eucharistic Litany, number 566. Please stand. Bread of life, saving cup, feed our hungry souls with you. Nourish us, strengthen us by your presence in this meal. May we be one. Behold. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. As we gather and celebrate the sacred mysteries, we acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, bless Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brethren and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation and nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal, Shalashah, bringing to Elijah, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elijah said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected. How can I set this before a hundred people? Elijah insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, 
striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? Jesus said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 days wages of food would not be enough for each of them to have even a little. One of the other disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are those for so many people? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the people reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. Then, when they had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them, and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been made more than enough to eat. When the people saw the sign Jesus had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to try to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Multiplication of the loaves reminds me just two months ago I was doing a weekday parish mass and usually there's plenty of hosts in the tabernacle so the deacon would just set out a tray with just one four piece host on it for consecration. So I did the Eucharistic prayer and so on and during the Lamb of God I went back to get the hosts from the tabernacle for communion. I took it out and opened it up and there were only six hosts in it. There were 38 people in the congregation. I said a quick prayer, took up one host, and now there was only five left still, so I figured, I guess I can't multiply them. I'll have to redo. So I'll have to go get hosts from the tabernacle. I'll have to redo the Eucharistic prayer, because I can't do what Jesus did. There's still only six there. Tonight we hear that story in John's Gospel, the first of six weeks where we hear things about bread and Eucharist. 
most of you probably know that we alternate in the use of the Gospels. This is year B, so it's the year of Mark. Year A is Matthew, year B is Mark, year C is Luke, and then we start over again. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke. So over the course of the year, we hear the entire Gospel as told by those people. And then you ask, what about John? Well, we hear John during the seasons of Advent and Christmas, and then especially during Lent and Easter. And we hear it from John for six weeks during the summer of the Gospel of Mark's year, because Mark has the shortest Gospel. We don't need all the weeks of the year to hear it. We can get it done in six weeks less than the whole year. So for six weeks now, the next six weeks, the Gospel will be from John. And it will be dealing with themes of the Eucharist. But I won't talk about the Eucharist tonight. We've got plenty of weeks to do that. I'm going to talk more just about the generosity that it took to perform the miracle that Jesus did tonight, and why. And also you know that the Gospel usually has some kind of a relation to the first reading. And that was obvious the case tonight. The first reading from the second book of Kings dealt with the prophet Elisha multiplying foods that people could eat. There were two prophets in the Old Testament that could perform miracles, and they were before the prophets who came who had books written about them and their words. Those prophets didn't perform miracles. They spoke to people and warned them about what was going to happen if they didn't change their ways. Back in the time of Elijah and Elisha, they do perform some miracles, and they're, they're really working to try to get people to believe in the God of Israel. The place where Elisha performed this miracle, if you were listening to the story, the place was called Baal Shalish. Every name in the Bible, every name of a person, every name of a city has some kind of a significance to it. So the, the town where he is, Baal, is the name of the god that the local people worship. So he's at a place named after a different god. But while he's there, he invokes his god, the god of Israel, and says there will be enough bread here to feed these people. And it happens. He, the miracle happens. So Elijah and Elisha are the two prophets of the Old Testament that are able to perform miracles. And both of them do it in the, in the case of making food available for someone who doesn't have enough. We heard a few weeks ago about Elijah did it for a widow and her son who thought they were going to die because they were out of food. He says, you'll have enough, and they do. Tonight we hear Elisha feeding a large crowd with a limited amount of bread. So when Jesus does that, people will, of his time, immediately go back and say, truly, this is a prophet because he did what Elijah and Elisha could do. Maybe he can do more, and that's why at the end they even want to take him off and have him be king. Because if he can multiply food, wow, just think of what else he could do. Look how he could do with an army. They're thinking in those terms, but that's not how Jesus thinks. So he goes off and leaves to be off by himself. But why did he perform this miracle? Well, because he too is generous and had compassion on the people. He came, they came to listen to him. He was pleased with their faith. But then there's one other character in the story that I want to talk about, an unnamed one. Where did the bread and fish come from? This said, some unnamed boy. Because one person in this large group that was there listening to Jesus, because one person was generous and shared what he had, Jesus was able to make it so everybody had something. It had to start with the generosity of one. It's a reminder that when we are generous, God can multiply our generosity. When we choose to share, whenever we choose to help those in need, God can multiply what we do. Jesus did that in case of this boy, and he can do it for us. Because he cares, because he has compassion on the people, because he wants to reward our generosity. 
And remember what Jesus said when, when judgment time comes. What was the first thing he said about who goes to heaven and who doesn't? Remember, he says, when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. And that's the group that at the end he says, now come and come to the kingdom prepared for you by my father. His first criteria was when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. Elisha was able to do that in the first reading. Jesus did it in the gospel because of the generosity of the boy who shared. God does it through us when we share. It's an appropriate reading for us because we have the ability to share because we live in a place where there's an abundance of food and other resources. We need to be generous with them. We need to be compassionate toward those who don't have what we have. We need to make sure we don't waste. Like at the end, they collect up the leftovers because they don't want to waste anything. All of those are examples that we ought to be able to relate to our lives and try to incorporate into our lives. We need to care. We need to have compassion on those who don't have what we have. We need to try to share whenever we can. And we trust that when we share and when we're generous, God multiplies our generosity. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is incarnate, the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living the dead. In his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the Father. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We bring our special prayers of this evening before God. For the church, the body of Christ here on earth, that we may continue to nourish all those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are entrusted to govern others, that they may be attentive to those who are most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people from every nation may work together to find a way to provide food for all, so that everyone who hungers is satisfied. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are traveling this summer, that they may be kept safe, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bring the bread of life to those who cannot be here, that they may be a sign of the faithful gathered here today, and in so doing, widen the presence of Christ in our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, as we receive the Eucharist today, that we may be nourished in body and spirit and renewed in our mission to serve the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
if there are any small children who would like to come forward and place your offering in the basket, you're welcome to at this time. Our offertory song is number 531, One Bread, One Body, number 531. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life 
and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born the Virgin Mary. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. To all the angels we praise you, and in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Walker our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be queers for eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you all for serving. Good job. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, and only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 532, Bread of the World, number 532.
Or Joanne Gray, whose funeral was here this week. Eternal rest grant in her, O Lord. Let the perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Thank you very much to all who worked with Rag I think it was very successful. We had a lot of people stay both in our building and outside, and we used up all of our food except for the, some desserts. So they were, I heard all good comments about the food and for our hospitality. Thank you with that. We had some people from the Chancery in Sioux City stop by that were participating in the ride as well. <clears throat> they came to the house and two of them are in the insurance department. They said, Father, you need to get that tree branch off. <laughs> and this morning, some guys came by and cut it down. I asked them, who told you? Yeah, they said, Father Kelly told us that a while ago. So it was on our list. So the, so the branch is off. Had a good time at the fair last night and today. Some of you maybe have projects there. I went out and saw that. I will be going to Manila again right after Mass, so I won't have too long to talk. If anyone needs to see me, though, feel free to stop by and do that. Father Paul will be joining our parishes beginning on Wednesday, so next week we'll go back to the regular of, of three Masses for each of us. 
Uh, thank Father Rikes for covering uh, last Sunday and this coming Sunday. This week I'm going to be gone on Tuesday rather than on Monday. So I've, I have Mass in Vail and then here Monday morning, but not on Tuesday. And I've, I, we had 16 applicants for the secretary job and they were all good ones. So it's really hard for me to, to choose one. So I'm narrowing that down and hopefully uh, make a choice this week. But thank you to all of you who applied. There's, well, multiple, well, about 16 decent candidates. And, and it's very hard for me to do that. But pray for me that I make a good choice on that this week. Let us pray. Lord, we have consumed this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And one other announcement. We could use some more money counters on Monday mornings. People come in and help with the count collection. If you would do that, call Ann or let her know so that we can, we need about three more people. That would be very much appreciated if you could volunteer for that. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. And our closing song is number 757, Sing a New Song, number 757. <laughs>